Number 73, consider the following questions. And then we have letter A. What is the total volume of the CO2 gas and the H2 gas at 600 degrees Celsius and 0.88 ATM produced by the combustion of 1.00 liters of C286 measured at STP? And then we'll do B, you know, in a little bit, right? Let's focus on A. So they want to know what the total volume of the carbon dioxide and the H2O is, right? And they're telling us that it's coming from 1.00 liters of C286. Now remember, if they're giving you information about one compound and you want information about other compounds, the first thing that you're going to have to do is find out the balanced equation. So seems like they gave it to us. They said this was a combustion. So that means it's a hydrocarbon plus oxygen gives us the carbon dioxide and the water, right? That's a standard combustion equation. So I have C286 plus oxygen gas, right, O2, and this gives us CO2 plus H2O. I don't care about the states, so I'm not going to write them. Now remember, pause the video if you need to because we have to balance this. So just see if your answer matches mine if you want to do the balancing. I'm just going to do this pretty quickly because we spent a whole chapter on this. And if you guys need a refresher, you could always go back to that chapter. It's chapter four playlist um, on the chemistry 2E edition. It's on, you could find it in the, the home page of the channel. So there's two carbons. So I'm going to put a two here. There's six hydrogens. So I'm going to put a three here. Oh boy. Uh, we need to do a fraction here because this is four plus three oxygens. So that's initially seven over two. So I'm going to times this whole thing by two, which will change all the coefficients. So there will be a two in front of here. There will be a seven over here. There will be a four in front of here. And there will be a two times three is six. Get rid of the two times. And now we're ready to rock and roll. Okie dokie. So. Now let's see, we want the total volume of CO2 and H2O. So we want the combined volume of these two, V equals question mark. And they're telling us that it was at uh, 600 degrees Celsius. So I have a temperature with that information, right? What's the total volume at this temperature and at this pressure? So I have T equals 600 degrees Celsius. And they tell us that the pressure for this is 0 0.888 ATM. And then they're telling us that we combusted 1.00 liters of C286. So that's over here. We have 1.00 liter of C286 um, and measured at STP. Now remember, when they give us STP, they're giving us more information. STP means standard temperature and pressure. The temperature always at STP, and maybe I'll just put, we have a volume here, right? The temperature at STP is always 273 Kelvin, and the, temp, uh, the pressure at STP is always 1 ATM. Okay, so we want to basically find out what the total volume is here from the given temperature and pressure, right? And let's see if we could figure out a formula. Well. There's one volume, one temperature, one pressure. So from that case, I'm going to use the ideal gas law, which is this one, right? PV equals nRT. Now remember, the ideal gas constant R is 0 0.0821. And this has all the units that all the other variables have to be in. This is ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So... If we want to find out what the volume is, right, which is this one, so I'm searching for the V, that means that I should know all the other four things. Well, we know that the R value is always 0.0821. The pressure has to be an ATM, and they gave that to us, right? They gave it to us an ATM, so we have this information. The temperature has to be in Kelvin, but of course they gave it to us in Celsius, so let's just quickly convert that into Kelvin. Celsius to Kelvin, remember, is always plus 273, so 
we could just do 600 plus 273 is 873. So 873 Kelvin. And now we know what the temperature is. But the thing that's holding us back, remember, we're trying to solve for volume, is we don't know the moles. Now remember, N is the moles, and you have to be very specific. If you want to find the total volume of CO2 and H2O gas, that means that the moles that you're solving for has to also be the CO2 plus the H2O. So that's the first thing, all right? So just be very, you know, cognizant of that. So I don't know the moles of this. So that's what's holding us back. We basically need to find out what the moles of CO2 and the moles of H2O are. Once we find that information, we could solve for the volume. Oh, okay, so let's work over here. Maybe that's why they gave us information over here. Let's see. They gave us a volume. They gave us a temp. They gave us a pressure. So I can use the ideal gas equation again, right? PV equals NRT. Now throw that over here. And let's see. From here, did they give us a pressure? Yes, they did. They gave it to us in ATM. So we have this. They gave us the volume. And if we're using V, it always has to be in liters. So we have the right unit here. So we got that going on. R is always that constant number, 0 0.0821. And the temperature, we have that. That's in Kelvin. That's in the right unit. Oh, so that's why they gave us this. Because from here, we can find out how many moles of C286 there are. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. And since I know the moles that I'm going to find the moles, I can find out what this is. So let's go for it. I'll do the math, I guess, over here. So we're only going to use this information because in this case, we're going to solve for the moles of C286. So PV equals NRT. 1 times 1. Oh, they were very, very kind here. Maybe I'll put, you know, 1.00. Equals X times R times T, which is 273. So in essence, you want to solve for the X value. So I'm going to divide on both sides by the R and the T. So let's just do that. I'm going to divide by, whoop, I'm going to divide by 0 0.0821. On both sides, 0 0.0821, and then I'm going to also divide by the 273. So that will cancel out this and this, and we're just left with the R value, right? Oh, sorry, not the R value, the N value, aka X. So in this case, it will just be 1 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 273. Try not to round here as much because this is not the final answer. So I'm going to just give it a couple of decimal places, 0 0.0446, uh, we'll say 1.6, and that's moles of the C2H6. So we have this information. Okay, so 0 0.044616 moles. So since we know this moles, we can find out now through our balanced equation what the moles of CO2 is and the moles of H2O. Remember, that's just stoichiometry. So let's start it off. 0 0.044616, and I'll say that this is moles of C286 times by the ratio. Throw the unit you don't want on the bottom moles of C286 on the bottom. I guess we'll do CO2 first. So we'll do moles of CO2 on the top. Remember, these numbers are just your coefficient values in your balanced equation. So there was two, there was two C286s, so that's going to be the number on the bottom. And then there was four CO2s, so that's going to be the number on the top. Cancel this out, and we found out one of the moles. So, point zero, 
let's see, 0 0.044616, basically times 2, right? Times 4 over 2 is just the same as times 2. So I have 0 0.089. 232 moles of the CO2. So if I just kind of pull this a little bit downward, I have this number, right? We're almost there. This number is 0 0.089232 moles. Okay, so now we're just going to find out the moles of the other compound, right? The other product, which is H2O. So I'm just going to basically work off of this one. Instead of finding it for the moles of CO2, I'm just going to find it for the moles of H2O, right? This would be the same thing, though. And then I'm just going to find out that new number, right? What's the now the coefficient for H2O? Well, it was a 6. So I'm going to put a 6 here. And 6 divided by 2 is basically times by 3. So let's figure out what that new number is. So let's see. So 0 0.044616 times 3, I get 0. Point, whoop, hold on. 0. 0.133848 moles of the H2O. And that now goes here. So 0. 0.133848 moles. So now from these two you know, two pieces of information, we found the moles of H2O. We we just, you know, before we found the moles of CO2. So we could add these up to find out what the total moles of this is. So that plus 0 0.089232. I get roughly 0 0.22308 total moles. And now I found out what those moles are. So I have the n value, right? So now we can finally use PV equals NRT. So I'm just going to get rid of this information. If you need to write it down, just pause the video. But this has to go bye-bye. <laughs> um, and I'm going to just, let's see. I'm going to make a little box here so I could write it. So PV equals NRT. We have to use this information over here. So 0 0.888 ATM times by the volume, which is X, equals... The moles that we just found, 0 0.22308 times by the R value, 0 0.0821 times by the temperature in Kelvin, which is 873. And then I want to solve for the X value, so I'm just going to divide each one by the pressure, the 0.888. And then we will come to the first answer, 0 0.8. Eight, eight. So X equals the volume of the CO2 and the H2O. So 0 0.22308 times 0 0.0821 times 873. Divide that all by 0 0.888. And I look like I get, uh, how many sig figs do we need? Three sig figs? So it seems like it would be 18.0. And that's liters of the CO2 and the H2O. So that's our first answer. So for letter A, what's the total volume? It would be 18.0 liters of the CO2 gas and the H2O gas. Okay. All right, so letter A is done, and I'll just put a check here. Moving on to letter B, it says, what is the partial pressure of H2O in the product gases? Okay, so remember, partial pressure is just a fancy way for saying, what is the pressure of the individual compound? In this case, we're only looking for the pressure of H2O. Now remember, this pressure was the total pressure combined of the CO2 and the H2O. So basically we want to know out of this 0.888 ATM, how much of it is going towards just the H2O? Well, usually when we talk about partial pressures, we think of one formula. And before I use that formula, I'm just maybe going to get rid of stuff on the left-hand side here because we don't need this information anymore. So just pause the video if you need this 
but this is all going bye bye. It just makes it a little bit easier. Now, when we're talking about the partial pressures and the total pressures, and we have mole components, we like to think of this formula, right? And I'm going to just label this as letter B. Now, in this case, and maybe I'll drag this out a little bit over here. Basically, you have your mole of the compound you want divided by the total moles equals the pressure of the compound you want divided by the total pressure. It's, it's basically just like a ratio, moles on one side equals pressure on the other. Since we wanted to know the H2O, the compound that we're solving for, for both sides, they have to be the same, is H2O. So I need to know the moles of H2O and I need to know the pressure of H2O. Well, the partial pressure of H2O is what we're solving for. So this would be X. So that means I should know the other three. Well, out of this, you know, out of the combination of CO2 and H2O, they did tell me that the total pressure was 0.888 atm. So I have this. And then for the moles, we do know that the specific moles of the H2O was 0.133848. So I know the top value. 0 0.133848. And now do we know the total moles? Well, yeah, when we added these two up, this was the total moles, right? This is the total. So this number down here is 0 0.22308. Now I have everything to solve for what I'm looking for. So basically, this would just be a ratio equals another ratio. Let's plug in the numbers. We got x over 0 0.888. And then we have the 0 0.133848 on the top and the 0 0.22308 on the bottom. I'm just going to erase this STP. We don't need this information. Goodbye. Um, and maybe I will bring this over a little bit over here. Because basically what we're doing is we're just cross multiplying, right? It's this times this equals x times that one, right? So I'll just write it out like that. We have 0.22308x equals the multiplication of 0.133848 times by 0.888. And then if you want to solve for the x value, all I'm just going to do is I'm just going to divide by that. Then we'll get our answer. 0 0.22308, 0 0.22308, cancel this out. This is the, R, the x value, which is the partial pressure of H2O. So x equals the pressure of H2O, which is whatever that is. So let's see, 0.133848 times 0.888 divided by 0 0.22308. And three sig figs, so 0 0.533, and that's ATM. Because the other pressure total was also in ATM. So you got to keep the units the same. And there you go. So the partial pressure for H2O was 0 0.533 ATM, and letter B is done. Whew, this one was a long one, guys. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Hope you're doing well out there. Let's keep studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.